I mentioned earlier on that when I had a surge in income, what took most of the money away were demands from other people that seemed to be very urgent and important. I realized that there are many of us who are mismanaging our finances because of that reason, because it sounds very legitimate. I mean, some, you know, somebody didn't have this, this, that, that. this person had this problem, that one had that problem. And, and you can find scriptural justification for that, for spending all your money, giving it out to other people. It took God to help me to resolve that. Because I was permanently carrying guilt around for not solving other people's problems. Until one day, the Holy Spirit said to me, you're pretending as if your middle name is El Shaddai. <laughs> said, you want to solve everybody's problem? said, you want to play my role in people's lives? He said, if you pretend to be El Shaddai, you'll soon find out your name is not El Shaddai, it is I shall die. <laughs> I'm serious. It, because I was plagued, plagued with guilt all the time for not solving people's problems. But God was trying to remind me, you are not God. Let me play my role in people's lives. He said, in fact, that there are some people I am trying to teach to trust me. They can't trust me. They can't wait for me. They will always look for a shortcut. I don't want them begging anybody. But they can hold themselves back. And I'm trying to train them to trust me. He said, when you step in, when I'm trying to help someone, you didn't help them. You frustrated their growth process. He said, so learn to hear from me before you help people. Before you give the money out. And I say, whoa. It's not every giving that you get blessed for. If you are going to frustrate God's purposes for giving, don't expect him to bless you for it. So I'm trying to help someone. Don't walk around with guilt all over the place. Because what happens is this. That once you have someone who is doing fairly well, and the person can't have the opportunity to build anything, to save, to invest, and to increase their capacity, eventually that person may come down to be at the same level with everybody else that he or she is helping. So we have what you call the crab technology. That's an invention. But somebody said, I've not proven it, that if you throw 10 crabs into one basket, none of them will come out. While one is trying to come out, one will pull the leg. Okay, let me describe it another way. In our environment, we have a culture of mutual impoverishment. Because we have a way of making wealthy people to feel very guilty for not spending all their money on us. Hallelujah. A lot of indisciplined people who will visit the result of their indiscipline on someone who through discipline built their wealth. Let me say this. If you will ever build wealth, you must spend less than you earn. You must be disciplined. You must exercise self-control. There's no other way to go about it. That's what my damn illustration is about. You've got to limit the flow. Spend less than you earn. Other than that, it won't work. Sir. You can't build wealth. Spend less than you earn. Now, some people are going to wrestle with that statement. <laughs> Spend less than I earn when what I earn is not even enough, it's not up to what I spend. <laughs> You're asking me to spend less than I earn when what I earn is not even up to what I... Because some people have a policy. Whether it is somebody else's money or your own, the important thing is for you not to lack any part time. So some people borrow shamelessly. The important thing is to have money to spend. You know... We can teach money management skills, but money spending skills, people don't need to be taught. All of us have automatic anointing for that. You know, the attitude many people have about money is that it's for spending. Money is for spending. What else do you do with money if not to spend it? You know, there are many people who come around wealthy people and they wonder what the problem is with them. 
How can you have the money and not spend it? And not can need. Spend this thing. What is it for? Ah, you, you remember the juju musician who sang the song, you, people who have money and who don't enjoy it. It's up to you. <laughs> it's up to you. You have the money. You won't enjoy it. You see, what many poor people don't realize is that it was that discipline. It was that control. It was that control that allowed it to build up to the point where you called it wealth. Spending. Some people don't only spend what they get, they spend more than they get. You must spend less. So what if the money is not enough? That's what we're saying, it will never be enough. The only way to turn the thing around is to save some. Save 10%. If 1,000 is not enough, 900 is also not enough. You understand what I mean? <laughs> What's the difference between 900 and 1,000? 1, the 1,000 is not enough. Why don't you take a little bit out of this 1,000 and use it to fulfill a principle that can turn your life around? That's what I say. If you can save 10%, save 5. Joseph told Pharaoh, famine is coming. The bad times are coming ahead. Let's take a fit part. A fit part. That's 20%. Let's save 20%. The season of abundance is here. The first seven years will be years of plenty. Let's take the surplus. But many people don't think like that. You must curb your appetite if you want to grow wealth. And I know it's difficult sometimes when you live in a culture that is built on consumption. And especially where people are trying to impress themselves. You know, ah, how can we organize a wedding ceremony in our family? And, and you know, <laughs> you know, we won't kill five cows. You know, or, you know, sp spend a lot of money, let, you know, and people won't hear about it. We can't do something in the secret with our status in the society, your status. That's your problem, okay? <laughs> yeah. There are lots of people who get married around, and as soon as they begin their honeymoon, they have migraine. They're trying to impress people. You have to deal with all of that and stop impressing people. You can't spend more than you earn. You must spend less. Do the budget and use that budget to control your spending. They are, but how can they have that ceremony and they are selling, you know, that's our own culture here, you know, for every ceremony, every burial, foreigner ceremony, every word, you must cut some dress. Say, how, how, how will they hear? I'll be the only one there who is not wearing the same thing as everybody else. So, Anybody who is angry that you are not wearing the right thing should buy you one. When I began to have financial mentors, those were some of the things I learned. One of my mentors said to me, it's very well done. He said, I have been hard on myself. He said, and it has paid me. So with that, I also had to learn. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. They're not important. You've got to curb your appetite. You have to spend less than you earn. Stop trying to impress people. And don't try to live up to the society's standards or definitions of success. Say, oh, this is your status. You know, there's a law that is called Parkinson's law. Expenses will always rise to meet income. Once your income goes up, get ready. It's a law. The moment you get that pay increase and you're walking through the supermarket, the items there will talk to you and remind you. The last time you came here, you couldn't afford me. Now you can. Buy me. Buy me now. You have the capacity. And you need to shame poverty. Put poverty to shame. You need to prove something to yourself that your level has changed. Ooh. 
And in the bid to prove something, you will spend the money. And there will be nothing to show for the increment. Some of us need to stop borrowing. We need to stop owing. It's become a habit. It's become a weakness. And we need to stop it. Because we're spending more than we earn. You remember Proverbs 21 verse 20? There's much treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But the foolish man spends everything. (laughs) <laughs> that's what scripture said if you spend everything whatever your excuses the money is not enough you spend everything he said you're a fool i know that's hard the first time i had that was how i felt it was at a seminar a minister seminar this person spoke for just 10 minutes on that one verse he said if you spend everything that is coming in you are a fool i said ah, ah take it easy come on this is not as bad as that Ah, what if the money is not enough? As if he heard what I was saying. He said, I know there are some of you here that are saying that the reason why you spend everything is because the money is not enough. He said, I'll tell you one thing. Even here, what has helped us is because we didn't spend everything. Even when the money was not enough, we always had balance carried forward. So it is not because the money is not enough that you are spending everything. You're spending everything is proof that your wisdom pipe is blocked. Oh my God, it was getting worse for me. It was like somebody took a pipe and hit my head with it. Hey, what are you talking about? I, said, I didn't say it. Solomon said it. That's what the scripture said. I'm telling you, as an individual, don't spend everything. And then you can't give what you don't have. If you don't develop those management skills, what will you do when you become a manager?